All right, so I'm here in my vineyard and it's getting pretty close to harvest time for some of these grapes. The sugar content is up. I've tested them. I've got them protected from birds. They're still getting a little bit of bird damage, but overall uh, it looks like I'm going to get a pretty good harvest. I've had some of that damage from the cold temperatures over the winter has, you know, impacted the harvest, especially of this variety, Frontenac, which seems to have the most uh, winter damage on it, but there's some other varieties that are have also been impacted. Some of the Concord type grapes don't look like that that affected them at all. So, but um, yeah, it should be winemaking season pretty soon. And some of these, like I was surprised, like Norton is usually a pretty hardy variety. This one here, and uh, there were big portions of the arms that were that had died back. Now, this is a super vigorous variety in our soil. It does really well here, and so it's bounced back and it has a lot of new growth on it this year. Um, some of the vines didn't fruit as well as they have in the past, but, uh, but some of them are doing, are doing pretty well. Definitely the vineyard recovered, but I, for some varieties like the Frontenac, there's gonna be a much lower yield this year because you know, most of the arms had died back and so I'm losing all that fruit. I also did some pretty severe uh, cluster thinning on those so that they could put more energy into uh, regrowing new shoots. They don't look as vigorous as the Norton do as far as regrowing new shoots. So they might have gotten more trunk damage uh, that you just can't really see and so that's affecting the flow of nutrients through the trunk and so they might have to be cut back to the ground eventually. You can see some pretty good uh, grape clusters on these. I just did a bricks test of these recently and they were only at like 20 to 22 bricks which I'm gonna hope they go up to like 23 or 24. This here is what phylloxera looks like. It's the root louse but this is the um, how it affects the plant on the green living shoots. It's like a one stage of the root of the phylloxera. And that is the uh, pest that wiped out the vineyards in Europe in the late 1800s, came from North America and went over there and wiped out the French grape vineyards. And that's what sort of inspired them to and encouraged them to develop these hybrids that I'm growing. Uh, not these ones specifically, these ones were developed later, but I think are relatives of the hybrids that they developed at that time. And so normally you could plant these on a rootstock that was resistant to phylloxera, and I actually have some examples over there of the Frontenac Gris that I've planted on rootstock, and uh, they still seem to be getting phylloxera, even though the rootstock is supposed to be uh, resistant or immune to phylloxera. I can't even begin to describe how much extra effort it takes to put up this bird netting. I spend hours and hours every year putting this stuff up. I have to put these clips on, cover every hole. It tears, it sticks to everything. Um, and so I have to repair it and then, uh, and it's pain to put on. It takes hours to get it off as well. Uh, and you're so likely to damage it in the process of getting it off. But if I didn't have it, uh, I wouldn't get a crop at all. You have to wonder if it's even worth it to be growing a crop that needs so much maintenance and so resource intensive, because it would be nice to be able to grow something out here that didn't just get devoured by wildlife. But I've never had it so bad gardening anywhere else and I don't know if it's just because we're in the country and there's a lot of wildlife but like between the rabbits um, the the raccoons and the possums eating my corn the birds eating fruit um, it's just you there's always something that's trying to eat your crop fortunately the deer are not as bad of a problem as they are in a lot of suburbs so that is something that we're lucky to have. They do do a little bit of grazing in the vineyard, but it's never really that much. Not enough to do some serious damage. You can see here, these berries on the edges have been eaten by birds. I'm sure that this hole was also caused by birds trying to get to this. The birds, like woodpeckers and things, will come along and they'll hang on the netting and they'll try to swing themselves close to the grave clusters. They are just really big pests in the vineyard and are bent on ruining all my efforts at the very end. 
but I guess you can't blame them and we have such a great diversity of birds on our property. It's kind of nice to have them. These are all Concord type. I think these ones might be Steuben. That's the variety. And this is one vine. I think I have one or two vines of this one, which is, uh, what is this one called? Swenson Red. And this one smells really sweet and turns a reddish color, obviously. It's not ripe yet. And then this is Norton. And I've got a lot of new Norton vines that are coming into bearing this year. They're not setting a lot of fruit, but they're setting some. And this is the variety that can make it through just about any season here without disease. So this is the one to be planting. And this variety is called Prairie Star. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a, a greenish white grape, a little bit of a this will make like a kind of a straw colored wine as well, sort of a yellowish colored wine. And this one does pretty well. I'm starting to increase plantings of this because it seems to do well in most seasons. I think the only issue that it has is with pollination. You can see there's some undeveloped uh, fruit in there. And I think that's because it needs to be crossed with a certain variety or variety that flowers at the same time in order to have good fruit set. So keep watching, subscribe and like, share the channel with your friends, and I'll see you next time.